fact. With pears. Talk about missing the point. Try having dinner with a 19-year-old who's been smoking weed. The life is gone. Passive, flat, trapped in their own heads. Do you want that for your kids? Of course not. Then why are our leaders pushing it on us? You know the reason. Because they don't care about us. When you care about people, you do your best to... Okay, that is was a little almost like white Malcolm X. -y. It's so weird. He was like, you want your pacifier? Right. It's it. It, it is bizarre. It is a that was a bizarre turn. Everybody's getting high and they're flaccid and he's dinner. gonna look for the non sequitur. <laughs> he's a real good pivoter. All right, and then and then he says, he's loans, which is why I want to talk about it. And he finishes um, with a direct attack on. The market. I mean, I'm back on board. Yeah, let's watch it. <laughs> Nothing divides us like the perception that some people are getting special treatment. In our country, some people definitely are getting special treatment. into uh, colleges based upon what they look like and blah, blah, blah. And it, wait, wait, what? Are elites just letting people into colleges based on what they look like? And he sort of, he, he pivots here to talking about um, the, this notion of special treatment. And, you know, a big part of the problem with special treatment is the complete lack of accountability for his folks. I mean, the people he used to work with, Fox, uh, for, you know, for one, uh, the President of the United States. I mean, there's a lot of different, special treatment comes in a lot of different forms. When he says special treatment, we may hear that one, but I think his audience hears another one. But, uh, the question is, what kind of country do you want to live in? Well, a fair country, a decent country, a cohesive country, a country whose leaders don't accelerate the forces of change purely for their own profit and amusement. A country you might recognize when you're old. A country that listens to young people who don't live in the world. A country where you can make a solid living outside of the big cities. A country where Lewiston, Maine seems almost as important as the west side of Los Angeles. A country where environmental laws are No, he's not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this whole formulation of normal people it's a college in Lewiston, Maine. And, uh, it's very lacking in normal people. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I should also like to remind Tucker that um, uh, per capita, Lewiston, Maine gets a lot more representation in the Senate, let's say, yeah. than folks here in California. I was going to say, uh, no one in a city has ever struggled to make a living, Tucker. <laughs> That doesn't happen. Exactly. I'm just going back. I just get fascinated by this use of normal people. Like I've used that as a joke to say, like we need a normal president, not a black guy and a woman. We need a normal president, right? And this guy's using it, and I'm not sure exactly what he means. Well, I do. I think, yeah, right. I think he's using it really similar way. A country where you can make a solid living outside of the big cities. A country where Lewiston, Maine, seems almost as important as the west side of Los Angeles. A country where environmentalism means getting outside and picking up the trash. A clean, orderly, stable country that respects itself. And above That's all, a country where normal people with an average education who grew up no place special can get married and have happy kids and repeat unto the generations. A country that actually cares about families. To the like perfect block of everything. <laughs> what would it take to get a country like that? Leaders who want it. For now, those leaders will have to be Republicans. There's no option at this point. But first, Republican leaders will have to acknowledge that market capitalism is not a religion. Market capitalism is a tool, like a staple gun or a toaster. You have to be a fool to worship it. Our system was created by human beings for the benefit of human beings. We do not exist to serve markets, just the opposite. Any economic system that weakens and destroys families is not worth having. A system like that is the enemy of a healthy society. Internalizing all this will not be easy for Republican leaders. They'll have to 
unlearn decades of bumper sticker talking points and corporate propaganda. They'll likely lose donors in the process. They'll be criticized. Libertarians are certain to call any deviation from market fundam fundamentalism a form of socialism. That's a lie. Socialism is a disaster. It does not work. That's what we're desperately to avoid. But socialism is exactly what we're going to get, and very soon. Normal people. If you want to put America first, you've got to put its families first. I love the juxtaposition. Like socialism, disaster. Fascism, really good. Right. Fascism works really well. There's not, there's not many places for him to go after this, is there? Do you remember when uh, it's, the, it's national socialism, right? <laughs> not real socialism. It's like you know, social democracy plus white supremacy equals what he wants. It's just about the families. Yeah. Do you remember when um when they when it came out that Jeff Sessions did have a problem with the Klan? Do you guys remember why he had a problem? Yes. With the Klan? Because they smoked weed. Too much weed. That monologue was like a high Klan session. <laughs> like we're not touching each other enough, man. Mark well, gets to serve us. It's <laughs> weird. Because he is identifying real problems, and some of these are real problems with liberalism and with things that Democrats and Republicans have done. Like, we have these stingy little means tested programs. Like, I recently talked to someone who's an expert on the welfare rights movement of the 60s and 70s. Government workers would come to women's houses, mostly single black moms, and if they found a man's slippers, they would kick them off of welfare. The answer to that is universal programs and more benefits. It's not to take them away. Yeah. Or I think you do a Facebook opt in. <laughs> and if you're single, there could be a sliding scale <laughs> for daycare, as well as an Uber voucher, which you'll reimburse 50% at the end of the month for a rebate at the end of the year, which will be given in the form of another voucher. <laughs> and that's fresh thinking. <laughs> You guys ready? Yeah, well. <laughs> I read that it was like okay for a couple of weeks. Uh, Maybe Well, his problem is he doesn't have. Steve Bannon always keeps this pretend. Oh, I'm opposed to. I want to know how rich people have more taxes, and that's like his fake. See, I'm the real deal. And Tucker has none of those. He should have at least one or two fake policies that coincide with that argument. Well, maybe that's coming next. next. That could be coming. It's coming next. But it's going to be like Jeff Bezos should be quartered. <laughs> that's for Trump. And we can build the coalition so around that. <laughs> I do worry that Republicans will adopt more of this rhetoric. 